Hello, my name is Dr Stuart Mills, and I'm from Barts and London School of Medicine and Dentistry in London, United Kingdom. And I've been asked to present a video abstract on a recent paper in gastroenterology called The Clonal Origins of Dysplasia from Metaplasia in the Human Stomach. Now, as you all are aware, gastric cancer is a common worldwide cancer with the highest degree of mortality associated with it. Risk factors include infection with Helicobacter pylori and the development of intestinal metaplasia. Now, while the test metaplasia can be associated with areas of dysplasia, there has been very little evidence to suggest a genetic link between the two. Furthermore, clonal analysis of individual metaplastic glands has been the source of some co controversy, where some reports have suggested that each individual gland contains multiple independent stem cells forming a polyclonal gland. The first aim of this paper was to investigate the clonal architecture of individual metaplastic glands. To do this, we've used somatic mitochondrial DNA mutations as markers of clonal expansion. They are non-pathogenic and increase in frequency with age. If two cells contain the same mitochondrial DNA mutation, it's very likely that they've derived from the same ancestor. To detect mutated cells, we use an enzyme histochemical assay for the activity of the mitochondrial coded enzyme cytochrome C oxidase. Cells which are deficient in cytochrome C oxidase are highly likely to possess underlying mitochondrial DNA mutations and are likely to be the cause of such deficiency. Here we show an area of metaplasia from a human stomach with a single cytochrome C deficient gland in blue which is surrounded by proficient coloured glands coloured brown. Now if previous reports are to be believed we should be able to find multiple mitochondrial DNA mutations within this gland. When we ex later capture individual cells from the top to the bottom of this deficient gland we actually find they contain the same mutation and therefore th these glands must be cloned. Next we are interested to investigate the mechanism by which metaplastic glands spread through the, the human gastric epithelium. We were able to identify patches of cytochrome C oxidase deficient metaplastic glands and we are excited to find that each individual gland within this patch contained the same mitochondrial DNA mutation, suggesting that each must have originated from a founder gland that had undergone several divisions. We call this process gland fission, and it's therefore very highly likely to be the mechanism of how metaplasia and dysplasia spread within the human stomach. To establish the mechanism of spread, we then went on to investigate the relationship between metaplasia and surrounding dysplasia using a cohort of Japanese patients with early gastric cancer. Once again, we used laser capture microsection to dissect large numbers of metaplastic and dysplastic glands within an entire region of stomach. Because gastric animal carcinoma is seen as a disease of stem cells, where genetic abnormalities accrue over time and are passed on to the progeny, we decided to gene type these glands by sequencing genes that are highly likely to be mutated within such cancers. We screened APC, P53, P16, beta catenin and, and KRAS, and this covers approximately 85% of all known mutations reported in the cosmic database within gastric animal carcinoma. In this picture you can see a metaplastic gland and a dysplastic gland sharing a common APC mutation, whereas the neighbouring hyperplastic but normal gastric gland is wild type. Therefore, the two are genetically related. Furthermore, we've shown throughout large areas of dysplasia that each dysplastic gland contains the same APC mutation. This is over hundreds of crypts, and therefore the entire lesion is cloned. We've repeated this in two further patients and shown that each dysplastic gland from the entire lesions contains the same binary mutation. Now when we look for further genetic abnormalities such as loss of heterozygosity in genes such as P53, we find that only a fraction of these dysplastic glands contain this. This shows a clonal evolution from a founder mutation and these are more likely to be the glands that actually go on to, to form cancer. To summarise, Intestinal metaplastic glands from the human stomach are clonal, they are capable of expanding by gland fission, and one single mutated metaplastic gland is able to form the entire dysplastic lesion within the stomach. We believe this is the first step in understanding the genetic progression from metaplasia to gastric cancer. I'd like to thank the authors, particularly Drs. Lydia Gutierrez-Gonzalez, Dr. Trevor Graham, and of course Professor Sir Nicholas Wright for helping in producing this work.